Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to do um, analysis on the Tinix platform. We're both going to do the model comparison, but we're also going to do some error analysis with the confusion matrix. So if you're trained multiple models with the predictions, you can upload them to Tinix and then you can figure out which of the models are the best on your specific data set. So let's just jump straight into the Tinix platform. Here we can see that we have our data set, so the BDD validation data set. And then we also have all the models down here at the bottom. So to have a Tinix perfect model, which is basically just the ground truth labels. So this is what we're aiming for. We have also tried to train a faster RCNN model for optic detection, Swin transform model, and also HRNet model. In the previous videos, we went over their data set explorer. So if you're interested in that, definitely like check those previous videos out. I did this mini series of free videos where in the first video we went over the data explorer. Then we also went over the embedding viewer in the second video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the model comparison tab. So right now it is just loading the models. It will just take a second or two. We have the intersection over union. We can tune that. We can basically just um, have a higher threshold. We can also set the confidence score. We can also have multiple tags from our images, but also our classes here. So the most important ones are probably the classes. If you want to compare our models based on individual classes, maybe if you're doing like some self-driving system or like autonomous system, we probably want to be really good at detecting pedestrians. And we also have this model tab. So here we can basically just choose all the models that we want to compare. Let's just take all of them off so we can see and do a comparisons of all the models together. At the end here, we also have this optic filter if we want to filter it based on the false negatives, false positives, true negatives, and also mispredicted labels. So here we can see the model comparison. We both have the mean average position and also mean average recall. Here we can see all the models that we're comparing with each other. So we have the black one, which is the 10x perfect model. Then we can also compare the other models. We have the faster RCNN in blue, and then we have the Swin Transformer in green, and the orange one is the HRNet. We can also scroll down and see like the average precision. Um, so if we're looking at that, the best model is um, for sure, like, like not for sure, but it is the Swin Transform model. And here we have like a slightly worse model with the HRNet and also faster RCNN model. So these three models here, they are pretty close to each other, which might mean that we have some things in the data set that is not labeled correctly. So here we can basically just choose what we want to compare. So let's try to compare the perfect model with the Swin Transform model. We can see that the difference is act like point free here so we can actually like increase our precision by a lot of course our models will never be perfect but we should be able to achieve way better performance if we actually like go in do modifications clean up our data set find specific edge cases and blind spot which we have been doing and shown some examples of throughout this mini series so we can either look at individual classes directly here on the overall overview but we can also go into the class drop down menu to the left so let's try to go with pedestrian. So here we go. Now we can see that we basically just have like the overall mean average position for the pedestrian and we can see the only the pedestrian class. Then we can go in and see that the Swin Transformer performs the best. The others are like slightly behind, not too bad, but the Swin Transformer is the best. Let's just take the other views back again. Traffic signs, pretty identical. Uh, the biggest difference is probably here in the bosses where the faster RCNN is not as good as the other two models. But again, it can be used for a lot of different kind of things. This is basically just to do a model comparisons of, uh, on a higher level. We can definitely see that the data set plays a vital role in machine learning and thief learning. Okay, so another cool feature I want to show you guys inside the embedding viewer after we have done this model comparison is that we can go inside the embedding viewer and basically like do some sorting based on outliers that we have in our data set. So first of all, we're just loading our embedding viewer. We can either have like dots, we can also have the images. So right now we basically just have our images here in our data set. We just have all of them. We can go in and actually like color it by high level features. Let's do that. So now we can actually just go in if we want to take a specific region and tag that. So we can go in and compare our model prediction based on that region. Let's just go here. We can then hit shift and we can then mark a region where we actually like want to, to analyze data or like tag the data. So over here we get the different available tags that we have set up for our data set and model. Let's just go inside the tag. Um, and then we're just going to like choose uh, a boundary here. So let's try to do that. So we have like a boundary between different regions here grouped by our high level features. So now we have tagged all these images here, as you can see. So we have these three regions overlapping, the orange, blue, and the green one. Then we can just hit shift and, and choose the region that we want to tag. And now we can see all these white dots are actually like our tagged images. So now when we have tagged our images with this boundary, we can go inside our model comparison again. Now we can go in and, and filter it based on our tags. So let's now go down into the tag. We can then choose boundary. And now we like like compare our model prediction based on 
um, the tag or like the images that we want to choose specifically. So down down here we can see our HRNet model. It has an average position of 0 0.68. Let's now go in and remove the tag and see if our model actually like performs better if we're not taking those predictions into account. So let's remove that again. So here we can see that that we actually like have higher average position on the images that we have tagged with our boundaries. So you can use this for a lot of cool things. Like if you have outliers in your data set, you can go and attack them as outliers, see how your model performs on outliers. It could also be like day, night images and so on. So this is a really cool feature that you guys can use as well. Basically just to test different edge cases in your data set. It's really cool and it's, it's fairly fast to set up. So if we go inside the data explorer again, I want to show you guys the, the graphs we can do as well. So we have this confusion matrix. Ideally, we want to have all the values in the diagonal because then we have all the ground truth and all the predictions. Of course, our model is not perfect. So we will have some false predictions here and there. We can go in and see, okay, we have we actually have a lot of cars in our data set and the model is pretty good at, at, at predicting that it is a car. So sometimes when it's a truck, it detects it as a car. And also sometimes when it's a bus, it detects it also as a car. If we have a train, it doesn't really detect it as a car. Um, so it kind of makes sense because like at, at a car and a truck, it could be a mislabeling in the data set as well, but they are kind of similar. We also have a pedestrian. It is pretty good at predicting pedestrians. It is good that we're not predicting pedestrians when we have when we have a truck, bus, and uh, and a train. So we can see that even though we have some pretty good results, we can still like optimize and improve this data set way more. We can actually filter our predictions with our confusion matrix as well. Let's say here that we're predicting a car where the ground truth was a truck. If we want to see specific examples of where our models are failing, it could either be like our model or it could also be our annotations in our data set. But let's now just press here and then we like to like filter our data based on that. Then in a second, we will be able to see the images where we actually like predicting a car, where the ground truth was a truck. So then we can go in and see if we have some labeling pro problems or if we have some prediction problems, we can both see it here in the image view, but we can also go in and see the optics view. So we basically just detect the individual uh, bounding boxes and predictions that we get. We can see here that, that a lot of these images here are actually like blurred out. So it's, it's really hard to tell if it's actually like a car or a truck. But it's still like a pretty good thing that it is actually like detecting it as some kind of weird vehicle, even though here that we can really like, we can probably even see it with the human eye. Um, here we're detecting like a truck, which is a car. Here we also have a truck. So it really depends on the situations and all the optics, but you can go in and filter the confusion matrix. You can go in and take a look at the optic viewer, which is pretty nice. We also have another graph here. So let's go to that. So we basically just have the embedding viewer. We can directly see the embedding viewer as we covered in the previous video. The confusion matrix is probably like the most important like um, graph to take a look at when you're doing update detection, classification, or like whatever task you're doing, because it just gives you like the best overview, uh, the fastest, I would say. The embedding viewer also helps here from the Tinix platform, but you should always start with a look at the confusion matrix. So that's it for this video here, guys. We have covered the confusion matrix here then, but we also did the model comparison where we can see the performance of all the models that we want to compare to each other. So there's a lot of features that we can use the Tinix platform on. This was the last video in this small series where we covered the data explorer, embedding viewer, model comparisons. So basically like everything that you need as a machine learning engineer. So thank you guys for following through in this small series. I hope to see you in one of the future videos. Bye for now.